Merry Christmas, everybody. There's a new Corsica website. I'm Peter. Let's click around the website and see what we can learn. So, uh, Corsica.hockey is a website by Emmanuel Perry. Emmanuel Perry launched Corsica like two years ago, I think, and pulled the site down for a couple months over the summer, really uh, starting with the, uh, like the second or third round of the playoffs. But that's okay because he's relaunched it with a lot of new stuff. Uh, this is September 30th, and he just launched it this morning. I've, played, I've spent a little bit of time uh, clicking around, learning about it, but I thought this would be a good opportunity to show you what's new on the website and then also talk through some of the stats and what those stats mean. So along here at the top of the page, we've got uh, a couple different menus, team skaters, goalies, combos, which is going to be really special in a little bit, and some odds and ends under more. Let's start with teams because I think that's my favorite place to go. Uh, some of these things are not yet built out. For example, the custom query uh, isn't built yet, and the standings obviously won't really make any sense until the season starts. So let's click on team stats, and you're going to see a bunch of teams listed on the page. Uh, so we, at the top of the page in this gray box, we've got filters. So you could presumably just do a quick comparison. So you could see, let's see how Washington and Pittsburgh did last season during five on four during the regular season, and we also do during the playoffs. Uh, and now we can see that, uh, well, you know, let's not talk about that actually. Let's, 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 let's go back to the regular season. Uh, let's go at five on five and let's look at everybody doing everything. So regular season, uh, you can also like check out your road or home splits. So uh, here we are seeing how many games each team played. Obviously, everybody played every game. When you see an 81 here, that means we don't have data or that team just tripped didn't play that game. I think there was, there might have been like one or two games that just got skipped. Uh, so uh, TOI, that's obviously the time on ice. Now, obviously, the team, the, the time on ice won't add up for every team because it's just five on five minutes. So some teams get more power play time than others. Uh, when you see stuff like divided by 60, that's something that you can compare across teams, even if they've got different total amount of ice time because it's a rate. It's how many per hour play. So when we see CF, that means Corsi events for Corsi is a silly term for shot attempts, shots directed at net. So uh, every time a shot is blocked or missed or on net, including goals, that counts as a Corsi event. And we can see how many uh, each team was on the attack and how much each team was on defense uh, per season. And then we can get the differential, the plus minus for that uh, in the C plus minus column there. So let's see who got outshot the most. My guess is it's going to be like Arizona or uh, uh, oh, uh, Buffalo. Okay, cool. So here we see that uh, Arizona got outshot the most. Uh, my guess, if I scored on the bottom of the page, will be like LA and Boston with uh, Washington, maybe like fifth or sixth. So down at the bottom of the page, we got LA uh, plus 717, which was awesome, followed by Boston, followed by Montreal. With Washington's better than I thought. That's pretty good. So, uh, we, you can express uh, the uh, shot attempts for and the shot attempts against as a Corsi 4 percentage, or I call it a shot attempt percentage. Uh, the F meaning it's like your team's shots. So uh, if we sort by that, we can see LA is up at the top, meaning they took more shot attempts than their opponents, followed by Boston, followed by Montreal, followed by Washington. So Washington was the fourth place in the, uh, the Corsi. Some people can call that uh, a proxy for possession. Some people poo poo that. I think it's still a, a valid way to think about the game. Uh, you know, time on attack versus time on defense. Uh, so when you see CF60 and CA60, that's shot attempts generated per 60 minutes and shot attempts against per 60 minutes. 60 minutes is sort of like an arbitrary number, but it's like you're, you're, uh, if you played five on five for an hour, that's how much you would get. Uh, so the team that generated the most offense last season uh, per 60 minutes, again, Boston, followed by LA, followed by Toronto, which I think was a really special team, but you could see that they kind of, Bled shot attempts against. In fact, if I look at the teams that got shot against the most, they were in the bottom. Where was bottom? Where is Toronto? Did I miss them? I can search. Oh, oh there we go. They were uh, they were third, so they, they kind of got lit up. So too did Pittsburgh, which is a little bit of a thing that was kind of interesting to me. So uh, once we move past the stats that start with C and into the ones that start with G, now we're talking about goals, and so obviously you care more now. Uh, so who had the most goals in the regular season last year during five on five? That would be your Minnesota Wild, uh, which is a little surprising. I thought them more as like a special defense team last season, uh, but they were you know excellent in general. If we split to if we uh, jump to differential, we see that uh, Colorado Avalanche with their miserable goaltending last season got lit up, and they had the, the worst goal differential. Uh, and the best goal differential should surprise no one. It's Washington. 
In fact, uh, if I go up here and I look at that plus 66 during uh, 515, if I just start adding more seasons to this filter up here, da -da -da -da, this is every season we've got available in Corsica, and we uh, don't aggregate it. So we get uh, one row per team season. So uh, Anaheim's got a 2016-17 season and a 2015 season. Let's see who has the best goal differential on the goal percentage ever. Uh, so the best would be Washington's 2009-2010 season, the magical PBO season where basically every shot went in. I think even like Brooks like hit 20 plus goals, 25 goals, uh, uh, followed by last season for Washington uh, in which they had a plus 66. If you look, go by percentages, you'll see, I think the probably that those same two seasons, yeah, uh, uh, the Capitals just wrecked it last season. Then 2013-14, I think uh, Tuka Rask was amazing that season in goal for uh, the Boston Bruins followed by the 2009-2010 uh, uh, Capitals. So uh, let's let's return back to just having one season of data at a time up there. Uh, and we'll uh, jump past uh, the goals and let's look at expected goals. Expected goals is one of the more uh, fancy stats. You can do some pretty sophisticated stuff by looking at shot volume. How many shot attempts do I take? Plus shot quality, which is sort of like a score that you attribute to each individual shot attempt based on where it's coming from, uh, what cir circumstance it is, like a deflection or a rebound being a more dangerous shot, a shot that's more likely to go in. Therefore, if you take more of those shots, we expect you to score more goals. Uh, XGF, you can often see that uh, recorded as, and there's a number of different ways that it's calculated. Uh, this is the one we're using on Corsica. So let's see who was expected to score the highest rate of goals last season. It's Pittsburgh. That's okay. Followed by Toronto, which has that really special offense. But again, their uh, their expected goals against is pretty darn high. Let's see what's going on. I think that we'll see. I, I talked about this a second ago. Minnesota had a really special defense last season. I think that, yeah, yeah they are the lowest. I, I really think that Bruce Boudreau, well, we'll see what happens this season. But I think he might have done something really interesting with the defense in uh, in mini last year. So uh, let's jump over here to our, our last few columns in this view. Uh, penalties taken versus penalties drawn. I think it's a really interesting stat, but it's a little bit more interesting when you look at an individual level and you could see like Tom Wilson from a couple seasons was really remarkable. You could see like Marcus Johansson is one of those players that just doesn't take any penalties. Uh, uh, you got a guy up in Toronto like Nassim Kadri who is really special at drawing penalties. Back in the day, you'd have a uh, Guys like, uh, who's that Russian dude from Detroit? That guy. You know, the guy that everyone says really strong in the puck. His name's not coming to me yet, but you know who I'm talking about. Uh, so penalty differential, obviously, is really special. We can see, oh, uh, really important information. Who sucked at penalty differential last season? It's your Washington Capitals. They just had a penalty problem. They were just drawing them way too much. Why that happened, you can, we can talk about it in comments. <laughs> Excuse me. Uh, so shots for uh, uh, this is the shooting percentage for uh, the team, meaning the percentage of shots that went into the net that only counts your shots on goal uh, and your save percentage. And if you add these two numbers up, you get a made up stat called PDO, uh, which essentially lets you know, like, uh, since these numbers regress a lot from year to year, meaning you can't really rely on a high shooting percentage to say high year to year, uh, you can say, well, Oh wow! Does it have the? Does it say just win, baby? Manny, you clever, you clever dog. Uh, you can see which teams got really smoked, like uh, with below average goaltending. Well, you can call it like finishing and goaltending. Uh, uh, Colorado was really troubled by that. Uh, uh, Boston, for all of their possession talent, just didn't finish as well as they should have. And on the other side of it. Uh, Washington was killer for a lot of the season. Minnesota just had amazing goaltending. Um, that was a really big uh, accomplishment for them last year. All right, let's let's hop back uh, to the main page and look at some uh, some different reports. I think when we look at individual skaters, we can get even deeper. Uh, so we're on the skaters page. Uh, actually, I didn't mention this before. Let me do this right now. So uh, one thing that Manny's added to the site are these two guys at the bottom. Uh, your CSV export and your generate URL. Uh, so this makes the data a lot more portable. Uh, Manny's an open-minded dude. He, he doesn't want to be precious about the data on his site. So if you want to grab this report of all 779 forwards during five on five, you can hit save here and it'll copy a, it'll create a comma separated values spreadsheet 
on your uh, your computer. You can import that into Excel or Google Sheets. You can make your own pretty charts out of it. Uh, here, like uh, this uh, generate URL, you could take your filter up here. So if we say, let's look at uh, every team forwards during the power play. Let's just look at five on four specifically and look at individual numbers uh, of guys that played at least 200 power play minutes. Ta-da, now I've got 61 players and I can be like, oh, let's see who had the most goals of the full-time dudes. It's Alex Ovechkin, no one's surprised here. And with this little field down here, I can copy this and paste that anywhere. And now I can share that with people. I can say, hey, check out this cool report of forward goal scoring during the the, uh, the power play last year. Uh, I can make that link portable because up here you can see it's just your basic URL. So it, uh, if I just say copy and paste that and send it to somebody, they're going to lose all the neat filters I put on. So I think that's a, a really good improvement, sort of making, of course, feel like a more community-based thing that, like, you know, it's your coffee table book. You can share with people and have a little discussion about it. So uh, let's return to uh, five on five stats. Uh, da, 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 five on five. Uh, and let's get, uh, let's get defensemen from the Washington Capitals. So at the bottom of this drop down here, I would love it if we could have like, a, if these team drop downs would say, here's all Metro teams or here's all teams from the East. Uh, rather than just like individual teams. But uh, we're waiting for the, the, the data to reload here, and there it is. So we now we're looking at a list of uh, the defensemen for the Washington Capitals who played at least 200 minutes last season. Uh, we could see uh, who our Ironmen were. Dmitry Orlov and Carl Alsner played all 82 games, followed by uh, Taylor Chorney. Now, something interesting here, when we look at Kevin Shattenkirk's numbers, it's combining his St. Louis Blues and his Washington Capitals numbers. So we need to like put a little pin on those, a little caveat when we look when we compare them to everybody else. All right, so uh, some cool stuff we can do on this page. Uh, right now we're looking at individual stats. Let's jump to their uh, summary stats, and we can see goals, assists, points. Uh, uh, this is your uh, primary points. I think it's your goals plus your primary assists. Your last got to touch the puck before it goes in. Am I right about that? I think I'm right about that. Uh, points per 60, primary points per 60. Uh, GS uh, is game score. Game score, I think, is Dom's uh, uh, stat. I'll put um, some information about that in the post. And I'm not even going to try to pronounce his last name because I think it's Polish and I'm, I'm an idiot. Uh, that's like a, a basically another sort of catch-all stat, a little bit like uh, expected goals, but um, more contextual. It, it tries to massage a lot of different data points in there, and I'm not going to pretend to be super informed about it um, here. So uh, Corsi for, Corsi against, that means when that player is on the ice during this game state, five on five, last season, 2016, 2017, here's how many shot attempts the Capitals got. Here's how many shot attempts the opponent got. Let's, uh, let's look at the differential and we'll see that Carl Olsner was the only player to get really blown out last season. Uh, Taylor Chorney, which is an interesting case, and I think maybe we can use this as an opportunity to look at that, uh, did, did far better. And on the opposite end of it, we see Dmitry Orlov killing it, Niskanen killing it, Kevin Shatner, Kirk killing it, Nate Schmidt relatively killing it, uh, Brooks Orpik still killing it. These two dudes played together for most of the season. We can look at that in a second. And then John Carlson played some pretty tough minutes, a lot of them with Carl Olsner and got, got wrecked, and then Carl Olsner was just deeply in the red. We can see that same number expressed as the Corsi 4 percentage or shot attempt 4 percentage. We can see that from bottom to top, it goes uh, Taylor Chorney, who uh, you, even though his uh, differential number is lower because he played fewer minutes, that minus 41 out of a total of 449 shot attempts is a is a lower uh, uh, percentage of, of the overall shot attempts. Uh, whereas Carl Osner did slightly better, uh, but played a lot more minutes, and therefore it, it overall hurt the team way worse. Uh, at the other end of the spectrum, we see Matt Niskanen again, killing it. Dimitri Orlov, killing it. Relative CF is, is where it gets even a little bit more complicated, and, and this is a really helpful one to understand. So uh, relative CF uh, or relative shot attempt percentage, or, or sometimes you can call it relative possession, uh, means how much better the team did in that stat, Corsi 4 percentage, when that player's on the ice versus when they're off the ice. So if you take what the Capitals did while Carl Alster's on the ice, and they got 47%, uh, 47.25% uh, of the shot attempts when he was on the ice uh, versus – the, well, I know that the number that when he was off the ice was uh, 6.77 higher, percentage points higher, which means that the Capitals did a 6.77% uh, 
worse, percentage points worse when he was on the ice versus off the ice. Whereas you can see that Matt Niskanen improved, whether he was the one doing it or more of a pastor in the effect, uh, improved the team's possession. Again, uh, Corsi 4 is a, a proxy for possession. At least that's my interpretation of it. Uh, 3.88, which is pretty terrific. And you can see guys right in the middle here, like Brooks Orpik himself did not drive, uh, did not change the, the team's overall shot of percent percentage. Sometimes you can see that that this number is way higher because other players are just making it so much worse. And there's gradations of meaning to it. Uh, so here we can see uh, goals for, goals against. This number is just going to be tremendous everywhere because the Capitals scored like crazy and had excellent goaltending all last season. So you can see nobody's in the red here. Uh, Taylor Chorney was a plus seven. John Carlson was a uh, seven. Carl Olsner, again, even though he got blown up in shot attempts, he was defending a lot more than he was attacking. He still had a positive uh, goal differential. Uh, that's a, a mark of both living shot quality, you could argue, or getting really lucky from your forward scoring and your goalies bailing you out. Uh, goal force percentage, obviously, is the same information we saw on the team page, but on the player's basis. So uh, Taylor Chorney, that's amazing. I don't, I don't think you'll see that in a full season ever. Uh, as we move over to the right, we see relative goal score percentage. That's the same thing as your relative course score percentage of both goals. Expected goals, again, the same thing, just broken down individually. You will see here, this is an interesting thing, that it's a little bit more damning of uh, Carl Alsner here uh, because you, he has uh, – oh, no, excuse me, excuse me. Uh, it's, it, it, you see a little bit more of a defense of Carl Alsner versus Dmitry Orlov. Dmitry Orlov has a very high expected goals against rate, which is kind of remarkable. I mean, uh, the, the, the game pace, there's more shot attempts while Dmitry Orlov is on the ice. And he certainly offsets it with expected goals for, but uh, expected goals is not a super favorable stat for uh, Dmitry Orlov. And it is a little bit of a defense for Carl Alsner in that he didn't see either the volume or quality or really uh, uh, the product of the two when he was on the ice compared to your super high event players like Dmitry Orlov, who in his defense, and really this is true for Alsner as well, went up against pretty tough deep, uh, uh, opposition. And we'll look at that in a second here. As we scroll over, we can see uh, penalties taken, penalties drawn. Uh, and their individual uh, 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 rates. You can see, whoo, tough, tough one for uh, uh, Kevin Shattenkirk. Really got um, uh, busted on a lot of penalties and only drew a handful. He's not a big puck carrier in the offensive zone, and he's more of a distributor. So I, I think that sort of makes sense. Uh, same thing with Dmitry Orlov, just really tough, tough numbers here. I'd love to see him bring those down next season. Uh, I think maybe we'll take a pause on this, and I'll jump to forwards to show you why um, the, the Capitals did some pretty interesting stuff uh, with penalties last season. So now we're looking at the forwards during five on five last season, as long as they played at least 200 minutes. Then we go all the way over to penalties taken and drawn. We see Marcus Manson took only two penalties in 1,100 minutes of ice time. That is amazing. I don't think you'll see many players in the entire league uh, with numbers that low. Whatever, once in a while, you'll have a player that you know draws none or one uh, in a whole season. Whereas down the bottom of the list, we've got Tom Wilson, who almost doubles the next guy who is Alex Ovechkin in, in drawn penalties with 41. But again, uh, Brett Connolly here, uh, for all the good stuff he did, man, Brett Connolly had an amazing season last year, generating as much as he did on the on the third line. He did get he draw he took a lot of penalties and not offset the withdrawing uh, withdrawing penalties. Whereas Tom Wilson. Uh, he's still in the red. He, he used to have this really re remarkable ability to draw penalties but not take them themselves unless they're fighting penalties, in which case you know, it offsets and you're not giving up a power play. Uh, that skill seems to have diminished from Tom Wilson. We see that exposed here. Uh, so uh, let's jump back to our defense and we'll, we'll jump a little bit further to the right. Okay. So we're looking at our defense again. We are past the penalty differentials. Now we're looking at individual. Uh, of course, see, this is great. So uh, you can see the individual shots taken. This, uh, when you look at the rate here, it tells you like how much is that defenseman? And these guys will have pretty low numbers. How much are they participating in the offense? You see, no surprise, Niskin and Carlson have the highest, and Carl Alsner. Carl Alsner like never shoots at the bottom of the list. Uh, uh, Dimitri Orloff is one of those players that I think that people frequently mischaracterize. He's not a high volume shooter. He's more of like a uh, a passer. Uh, he doesn't really get involved in the offense himself. So uh, jumping over to some other stats, we see the individual shooting percentage zero for Brooks Orpik. So Brooks Orpik took, a, you know, he took 175 shot attempts. Uh, none of them went in, uh, which is, you know, brutal. Uh, the individual PDO, who got who got really lucked out from uh, percentages? You got your Taylor Chorney, just, you know, only a light uh, season. Uh, with Nate Schmidt, again, awesome uh, PDO. 
uh, ZSR is zone start ratio, which is like uh, how many of their zone starts start in the offensive zone versus the defensive zone. This, again, will be another uh, mitigating defense for Carl Osner, who sort of a lot of shifts in the defensive zone. Uh, whereas Nate Schmidt, you can call him sheltered because he started a lot of his shifts in the offensive zone. You're close to the, the, the opposition net, which means you're more likely to start off that shift, you know, that, at that face off with a shot on goal rather than, you know, skating back to your own end to defend. Uh, TOI is the amount of ice time that that player got out of the available ice time for that player. So, uh, well, if we like sort the list, if it works, seem to be having some trouble come on buddy that's okay sometimes these things happen we don't have to get anxious about it um well it's not sorting but we can just like uh, scan the list and see that taylor chorney super sheltered uh in the times when he was used barry trot just didn't want to use him that much whereas we see dimitri orloff all of a sudden get tons of of, of minutes same with uh, matt niskin and they were clearly the number one pairing meaning if Barry Trotz had to pick which pairing to use on the ice, he's using those two most of the time. Whereas poor Nate Schmidt over here just really, really didn't get used a lot. Um, you know, it's a, it tells you a little bit about like what, um, what Barry Trotz thought about his available defense. So uh, yeah, sometimes uh, uh, of course uh, freaks out a little bit uh, as it's trying to pull data. That's okay. Uh, and you just have to issue a refresh, but that's okay. Cause we can save our filter using this lovely dude at the bottom here. So I'll just drop this on here. And hopefully it'll reload perfectly. In the meantime, how are you doing? You doing good? You having a good off season? You excited for the season to start? Me too. All right, just let's just uh, take it for a second. And... These are the growing pains of the stat site. There's a tremendous amount of data that's being handled by them. And today being launch day, it's getting slammed with traffic. So it's certainly understandable that like the site wouldn't operate, you know, perfectly every single time. Uh, so again, we're still waiting for that data to draw. And this is sort of like a, one of those built in issues that you just have to deal with sometimes. Okay, wonderful. So our data is pre-populating. We've got our, our information back. Let's jump, we, we left it at TOI percentage, which by the way, now I should be able to, no, I really still can't. That's okay, though. Uh, TOI, QOT is the same thing as TOI percentage. Basically, it's saying uh, how much was that player, what was the quality of the teammates? What was the, uh, of the teammates that that player skated with? How much ice time did they get out of the available ice time? Same thing with Corsi 4 percentage. Of the players that that player was uh, uh, skating with, what was their, uh, like, average or weighted uh, a shot at 10 percentage? Uh, and then the same thing for, for quality of competition. So like the really cool stuff about that is you can be like, oh, wow, uh, Carl Alsner went up against, again, here we go. Carl Alsner went up against way tougher players than Nate Schmidt down here. Uh, and those numbers you'll see are, won't jump as much from, uh, there'll be like less variety in them. You would see that like the, the standard deviation would be a lot smaller. If I sort that same data by uh, QOC, which is the TOI, you can see that Nate Schmidt's guys played 28%. The, the players he's playing against got about 28% of the minutes versus Carl Alsner's, which got 29.5% of the minutes, uh, which I mean, tells you that like there's a, there's a bigger spread between those players, um, you know, with like your, your shot attempts and your goals, the numbers normalize around 50% with a QOC. You'll see, uh, well, depending on what the metric is, it'll either like if it's a, um, if it's a, a competition based using time on ice, you'd really see it around like 30%. And if it's uh, uh, based on uh, shot attempt percentage, it'd be around 50%. So uh, there's a lot more we can get out of this. I think like one of my favorite stats to do is, or one of my favorite lookups is to look at individual shot rates. Uh, so if we change our report to individual, that'll stop telling us what happened while the player's on the ice and just tell us what that player individually was, was contributing to the team. So I have changed my filter to forwards and I changed my report to individual and now we're just waiting for the site to, to uh, respond. Again, it's getting hammered today. It's super understandable that I would do this. So let's see, let's see if it'll pull up. Um, has it updated my information down here? No, it has not. So I don't think it's listening to me anymore. That's okay. This is sort of like one of those things that happens with uh, the, the site and you sort of have to deal with it. Um, so I'm going to reset it. And I will pull up a different report. Once this, this 
poor hammered website reports back. This is a great spot uh, if you're just watching from home, if you want to get like a coffee or like a sun brewed iced tea, that'd be appropriate time for that. Okay, here we go. Uh, so it's pre-populating my last filter, which was the defense. Uh, let's go to forwards and let's go to individual stats. Again, we're looking at just Washington for here. Uh, so you see like your time on ice, your, your goals, your primary assists, your secondary assists. Man, you can really just throw out secondary assists. Uh, it's a lot of statistical noise there. Uh, and hop on over. This is your uh, um, hop on over to our individual course events. I think this is such an interesting stat because it tells us when that player's on the ice, how many shot attempts they're taking. What's their what's their fire rate, right? Uh, so this is every shot that comes off that player's stick that either ends up blocked, missed, or on net, including goals. So if I click this, it's going to uh, sort this list by that and we're going to see who one two and three are the results may surprise you just kidding it won't surprise you at all because at the top of the list is alex ovechkin he i'll check this in just a second he pretty much leads the league in individual shot rate or at least used to all the time i think you've seen guys like we're not brent burns start catching up there uh and like brad marchand i think is a, is a pretty hot fire um maybe guys like austin matthews will get up there as well we'll see so uh Burakovsky is number two. Burakovsky played most of last season on the third line, but he was taking tons of shots from it. Justin Williams, who was maybe the team's best possession player last year, uh, had a surprisingly high shot rate, whereas you have to go all the way down to eighth to find TJ Oshie. Not to say that he was bad or anything like that, but like he did not take that many shots compared to the other guys on the team. His, his output, his scoring, was driven by shot quality and shooting percentage. Uh, you can see there, this is basically the shooting percentage, which is the goals out of uh, the uh, total course, the events taken. And again, even when you include uh, uh, shot attempts and miss, uh, when you include all shot attempts, which means misses and blocks in calculating shooting percentage, uh, man, TJ Oshie is still way up there. Uh, Fenwick for Fenwick rate, that just takes out the, uh, the block shots. So it's just your shots on net and your missed shots. Uh, whenever possible, it's usually best to grab as many data points as possible, which is why people prefer Corsi or all of our shot attempts over Fenwick, which is unblocked shot attempts. There's a caveat to that, which is that uh, you don't get good X and Y locations on block shots. And they won't tell you where uh, Andre Burakovsky took the shot from if it ends up getting blocked by, let's say, Sidney Crosby. All right, so uh, shots for those are just your shots on net. So you can see who had the most uh, shots on net. I think you'll see that Burakovsky drops a little bit here. Yeah, so like Burakovsky had a little bit of an accuracy problem, even though he was second in uh, 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 attempted shots, he was third in uh, shots actually making it on net. Uh, shots for uh, shooting percentage, this will surprise nobody anywhere. Boom, TJ Oshie, 26%, followed by Brett Conley, who had an amazing season, but man, you don't score on one out of every four or one out of every five shots. Those were crazy high numbers. And, and Daniel Winnick, Daniel Winnick had a great season, but if you look at his like rate, and he only takes nine shots per hour, yeah, that's not a high rate. That's by far the lowest on the team behind guys that won't surprise you, like Marcus Johansson, who wasn't a big shooter, at least during five on five, and Jay Beagle. Uh, so like, while Daniel Winnick was a tremendous player, great possession player, and had pretty stunning scoring success, I mean, Nine goals out of Daniel Winnick just during five on five. That's not counting you know, special teams. That's, that was a huge season. So uh, jumping over the right here, we got some stats that, man, I do not care about at all. But I, I'm open to your thoughts. So uh, oh, I, I scrolled over too far. So we've got our individual shooting percentage, uh, individual expected goals for who got screwed over, who got very, very lucky. Well, Daniel Winnick, we just said, scored nine goals during five on five, but was only expected to get 5.55 goals during five on five. Uh, OV 16.24. That should surprise nobody at all. TJ Oshie was only expected to get 10 goals during five on five, but end up scoring 23. That is a huge gap. It may do a little bit of a suggestion that, that TJ Oshie, either the expected goals for model doesn't understand why TJ Oshie is so great or TJ Oshie's shooting percentage was way hotter than it's expected to be reliably, reliably, uh, you can take from that what you will. Individual penalties taken and drawn. Uh, so 
Uh, here we go. We got Mark Swanson. Drew two penalties, or took two penalties all season. Amazing. Tom Wilson, 41. Big difference there. Uh, their penalty drawn uh, and taken rate. Uh, individual face-offs won and lost. This is a little bit of a weird stat because you'll see players that uh, don't often take face-offs, like Tom Wilson, winning two out of out of eight. Bravo. Uh, but you'll see that, uh, and I don't think this will, this will shock anybody, but the guy that, that took and won the most face-off last season was Nicky Backstrom, uh, followed by Jay Beagle. Uh, but if you look at the the rates, Jay Beagle was your your ace on the dot. Well, Daniel Winnick, too, but Daniel Winnick only took 14 face-offs. So, nah, I don't know what to make of that. And if you have Daniel Winnick on a, and Jay Beagle on a line, you're going to have Jay Beagle take that face-off. Anyway, uh, the Caps did pretty good. Uh, I think it's a little unfortunate that, like, if Genny Kuznetsov, I mean, if Genny Kuznetsov, Kind of stinks at faceoff, and he's got a big sample size now. Uh, it's an interesting situation because it may disadvantage the Capitals on those big offensive zone draws. Uh, if if you're going to lose the puck more often than you should, then again, faceoff percentage reliably overrated as a driver of of play. Giveaways and takeaways, uh, individual giveaways and takeaways. These stats are recorded by humans in a way that's highly subjective, and you find a lot of home bias, uh, meaning like your home scorekeeper will record more takeaways than you may get on the road. Uh, so it's sometimes a good idea for, especially for those two stats, uh, giveaways and takeaways and the rates for them, to uh, go to your venue and look at road stats, the away stats for that. Uh, you may find that that information is a little bit more interesting. I think the NHL is gone a long way in improving scorekeeper bias, but giveaways and takeaways are just sort of uh, sketchy to start with. Uh, HF, IHF, I don't really know what this is. Oh, hits for. So how many times does this player hit? How many times does this player uh, uh, hit against? Uh, how many player, times does this player hit somebody else? And how many times does this player hit by somebody else? Let's see who was hit the most. That's an interesting stat, right? This isn't stuff that you get easily elsewhere. Tom Wilson was hit more than any other player on the team. But, <laughs> man, dude hits other dudes a lot. Uh, so Justin Williams hardly hit anybody. Uh, but uh, Tom Wilson, 15.6. Uh, by the way, man, Justin Williams, what a camer. Yeah, he's going to kill it in, in Carolina, even though he's uh, quite old. Who uh, You can see who blocks a lot of shots and who blocks um, you know more shots per hour than anybody else. If Kenny Kuznetsov, he's not getting in front of Fox. TJ Yoshi. God love him, and the Caps sure do. Uh, dude's not afraid to jump in front of a puck. Uh, as a guy who gets injured a fair bit, I mean, he only played 68 games last season, maybe that's a thing he should take a step back on. Uh, so we've gone through a lot of these numbers. There's also like some interesting reports about like relative stats. This will tell you the same thing that we're looking at with defensive players. There's a bunch of different metrics here about how it can be calculated uh, relative and relative T, like relative, like relative teammate stats. This is something that uh, Manny just rolled out for this version, and I would definitely talk about it if I understood it more strongly than I do now. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna kick that one down the, the road a little bit. Uh, context uh, and other are like your your grab bag stats. Uh, here where we see like ZS that stands for zone start. So um, a lot of shifts start on the fly, which just means dudes come off the ice, you come off the ice, and the clock's still running. Uh, zone starts are when you start for a face off, and uh, uh, if you start in the offensive zone, you're more likely to be uh, what we would call uh, an advantaged player. You're, you're getting, uh, you're not getting sheltered. You're getting optimized for scoring. Uh, you can see who gets used in what more often than anybody else. And it, it really shouldn't surprise you that like, uh, uh, you know, Jay Beagle gets used defensively a whole bunch. Um, and, uh, and you, know, you can see, think of that in a bunch of different ways. Like you don't want to waste your offensive zone starts on uh, Jay Beagle because he's not a high volume shooter, but you can also see that as, oh man, we're in the defensive zone. We need to get that puck out. Let's put Jay Beagle on the chop. So there's lots of different ways to interpret it, but here's the raw data and you know, make your argument based on it best you can. Uh, penalties drawn, uh, two minute penalties, five minute penalties. That's an awesome stat. I did not know that they were capturing that or that, uh, I mean, I, uh, I didn't know that many introduced that. That's gonna be a, a super helpful stat. Plus it'll tell you who's got the most five minute penalties. This one's not gonna surprise anybody, Tom Wilson. Nine five minute penalties. Uh, those can be majors. I wonder if he's including fightings in that. Individual major penalties taken. So, I mean, fighting majors, yeah, but that can also be, you know, you can get a charging major, and I'm sure that 
at least one of those was a charging major on Wilson because he tends to, to get those every once in a while. Uh, penalties drawn, individual giveaways, individual takeaways. Again, just use those sparingly. Uh, let's let's return back to our filters, uh, to our like main menu one more time and look at a couple other uh, things available. So goalies, there's some pretty cool goalie stuff out there because you can find out, and everyone knows what like the, the save percentage for a goalie is, but it's important to find out what it is from five on five versus penalty kill versus power play. Man, it's embarrassing when you give up a, a, a power play goal against because that means that you, uh, well, that's a shorthanded goal for the other team. So uh, let's do let's do this. Let's go like Holtby and Bobrovsky and I don't know Rask and Carey Price. So uh, those are some good goalies. I think took had a pretty rough season last year, but. We can look at a bunch of stats. Some of these are, are calculated in pretty interesting ways. So uh, save percentage, expected save percentage. This is that same number we saw elsewhere, but it's based on the shots, not that your team takes, but that this goalie faces. So well, we expected them to save X number of, of these shot attempts, and instead they got blah, 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 blah. So Braden Holpe, 92.45, but actually saved 93.65 during 5-on-5, five five, which was second best behind uh, Sergei Borowski. Actually, you know what? Let's add our boy Grubauer in here because, man, he had just a mondo season. He didn't get tons of minutes, but you'll see him leading in some of these stats. Yeah, there you go. 93-9-8. That means that only that opponents were shooting 6% against him. Compare that to what like TJ Oshie's individual shooting percentage was last year. It was like you know, 24% or something like that during 5-on-5. Five five. Uh, opponents were only shooting 6% against uh, Philip Grubauer. That's, you know, it's remarkable. Uh, again, his workload was way lower. He only played in 24 games and, and less than 1,000 minutes compared to 3,000 by Bob. Uh, so uh, lighter duty, but Grubauer showed a lot of, real, of promise last season. So uh, as we scroll over the right here, we find some pretty interesting uh, data points. Uh, LD is low danger shooting percentage, or, or sorry, low danger save percentage, uh, medium danger save percentage, and high danger save percentage. These are uh, different stats based on how dangerous that issue, that, that shot was. So, uh, like, you know, if you're getting smoked on those, it's kind of like, whoa, how are you missing these goofball shots? Or how are you getting these goofball shots in? Carey Price let a fair bit of goofball shots in. Whereas, uh, um, let's see, at the high danger shot, shot percentage, uh, Carey Price locked those down. So what's going on with Carey Price? Like, uh, had the worst among this little tiny little cohort of players had the worst low danger save percentage, but the best high danger save percentage. That's pretty amazing. Uh, Holpe, not again, not that great. Uh, Holpe, uh, Rask and Grubauer definitely came up the rear on those high danger save percentage. When you look at those on like, uh, if you were like do like a heat map, those are your really close shots, like right in the paint or a big deflection um, uh, circumstance there. Uh, we can also break this data down to see like what were these different players uh, penalty kill shooting percentage, which is, you know, you're going to see way lower numbers because your team only has four defensemen and the other team has five. I guess it's probably best to do a four on five here. It's not to, like muddied up with the five on three numbers. Uh, so we see like our state percentage. Uh, Holpe just had a rough season during PK. Uh, 84 state percentage compared to Bob's 90. That's that's a big difference. Uh, that's uh, six goals. That's a couple of, of different, uh, that's, you know, that's a couple of wins difference there. Uh, so uh, that gets us through like the top of our goalie stats. Again, you can do the filtering down here. You can save it as your own spreadsheet. If you, you know, download as a spreadsheet, you can jump it into Excel and do some pretty bar graphs or whatever you want, or you could, you know, grab data for, let's do this. Let's, let's look at some pretty interesting here. So uh, let's look at a historical history of Braden Holtby over the years during five on five. But I got to remove aggregate. So let's do that. Oh, I'm, I lost it. Oh, that's everybody. So I just loaded every goalie stats. Uh, sorry, Corsica, for hammering your database there. Okay. So uh, this is Braden Holby 2016 17, 2015 16, 2014 15, all the way back to 2010, 2011. All good there. Uh, I don't know why it's showing that he played 14 games per season. That's probably a bug. I'm going to tell Manny about that. So uh, how many minutes he played in each of those? Let's look at his save percentage. This will knock you out. So uh, actually, I should keep it sorted by date there. So uh, in each of these seasons, 93% save percentage. Uh, I mean, like the man is a machine. He is a robot during 5-on-5 five five 
seemed just about 93 or as high as 94, well, 93.65, the percentage in each of those seasons. That is amazing. You can compare that to a lot of the other guys. They'll be down at 919, 9.12 sometimes. Holpe just at 5 on 5 is the most reliable, most consistent, but consistently good goaltender in the NHL, bar none, end of conversation. But when you jump to PK, let's jump at like a score five, those numbers are not as reliable, not as good. So we had some pretty good years uh, in 2015, 16. Let's remove our, our TOI there. Uh, so uh, in his five on, this is uh, his penalty kill save percentage. He had a couple good years of, you know, 88, 89. Uh, in his first season out when he only played a couple of games there, uh, he only faced 50 shots that season, but he had 96 save percentage in his uh, first appearance in that. These, these years of 88 to 89, those were good, but man, hope he got lit up. Uh, this number right here is the reason why hope he didn't win back to back business. He would have won it again if he, if he just was a little better during uh, the PK or maybe the, the, the team in front of him were better at it. All right, so uh, let's return to our uh, homepage and see if there are any more odds and ends. Honestly, this is the part where we'll see some stuff that I don't know a super whole lot about. So combos. Combos are so important. Uh, this is where you find out if there's magical synergies between two players or one player is bringing one down. I don't think that the Wowies are up yet. Wowie stands for with or without you. So uh, that tells us uh, when Nate Schmidt and Brooks Orpik play together, they get a certain number of goals. They get a certain number of shot attempts. When they play a part, what happens? Uh, so let's see if that's up yet. It is not. It takes us to the uh, the YouTube page. That's quite all right. Great. Uh, so uh, if we go to combos, let's see if we can get line stats. This will be, I think, for forwards where we pick three players. Let's find out. Actually, we have a great use case for this with the Washington Capitals from last season. So uh, let's pull it up. So. Um, First of all, let's filter Washington Capitals just so we're not overtaxing the page. Uh, one thing I like to do when I'm using Corsica is I like to do the filter as fast as possible. Uh, so rather than putting like one player, then two players, then three players, I'll move like the, the TOI all the way to the right so that I'm not hammering the page with a whole bunch of requests that, that are pulling a lot of data. So uh, now I'm pulling up uh, Washington's data and you see these are basically all of the trios down here, how much they played together and how they did. Uh, let's move our, our our dude up to like 200 minutes together. So we just see the guys that play together a ton. So Kuznetsov, Williams, Johansson, man, what a trio. Those guys were amazing last season. Uh, even better in the playoffs. So watch this, 53.75. That was their possession number, their shot attempts uh, during the regular season. Let's go to the playoffs where they played against the toughest competition night in, night out. Oh, uh, but I got to move the TOI all the way over to the left because they didn't have that much time. I said. Boom, right at the top here, 54-14. So they were only playing against like Nylander and Austin Matthews and Sidney Crosby. And they got 54.14% of the shot attempts. That's amazing. Uh, of course, they didn't. it didn't really uh, show up in the, the goal differential. They were even. But man, it would have been way worse <laughs> if, uh, uh, if when other guys played those dudes. Uh, here you've got, uh, let's see here, Alex Ovechkin, Nicholas Backstrom, and TJ Oshie. Let's, uh, bring those, oh, in the playoffs again? Even. Really unfortunate. Let's go back to the Regos. But before I do that, I'm going to move this up to 200 minutes again so I don't blow up the page. Regular. All right. So Alex Ovechkin, Nicholas Backstrom, TJ Oshie. Uh, so check this out. When those three guys played together last season, I think this is instructive about next season, they only got about 50.15 of the shot attempts. That's about even. Like the opponents got as many shot attempts as they did, just about. Uh, but when you go jump over to goals, 30 to 19, they out they outscored their opponents that this line did by 11 goals. That tells us a couple of things, or at least it suggests a couple of things. That wow, that was excellent finishing or excellent defense. Um, you know, like maybe the goaltending was just superb, or maybe that those three guys generate amazing quality chances. But it also can suggest that. Uh, maybe they won't be able to maintain it. Uh, when we look at their expected goals for, we see that the numbers are, are showing us that they, they did a good job of limiting quality compared to how much quality they were generating. You know, this is a lot of shots, a lot of dangerous shots, and this is fewer. It's still more than the other lines got, you can see here, but it's, it's pretty darn good. Uh, still, it doesn't come close to what that amazing uh, second line did last season. And, and 
I, you know, I say that with a little bit of sadness because this guy's gone and this guy's gone. Uh, so that's a little bit of a bummer. Um, we see, we see uh, over here, you know, the differentials for those individual lines and wow, uh, you don't want to see that with um, uh, a team taking a line, taking as many penalties as that one did there. That's, that's not good. That means that like when you're, when you're supposed premier scoring lines out on the ice, uh, there, the, the play is ending more often than it should with the uh, penalty against your team and you going on to the, uh, to the penalty kill. Let's move the TOI minimum to the left. So maybe we can see some of the lines that may happen last next year. We're not going to see like your Verano Ovechkin lines because Verano just didn't play that much last season. Uh, but we could see like the TKO line, which is Alex Ovechkin, Kuznetsov, and TJ Oshie. I don't see it here, though. Let's go even further to the left. Oh, this is going to be a little bit bothersome, though. Uh, it's really tough to like filter these down here. So let's see. Let's just get ones with Kuznetsov in them. Maybe it works if I put Oshie in there as well. Yeah, it's just any line that has either of them. That's unfortunate. Like, you wish that filter would say, just get me trios that have both those dudes in it. And it doesn't really do that. Uh, so it's, it's actually better to have one name in there than multiple. Or Aaron Ekblad, because his name comes up first alphabetically, he's going to pop up every single time. Oh, worst thing on the website by a million miles is this, ready? So if I want to pull up Brooks Orpik stats, Orpikovsky shows up every time. Ugh. I want him to drop out of the league just to simplify the data. I think he actually just did that. Okay. Uh, I don't know why I pulled up Orpik. He's, he doesn't play a forward line there. We can do the same thing with defensive pairings. You shouldn't put a slash L on there. That's not a real web page. Uh, so uh, Wowies will be up eventually uh, more. I don't think that these guys are on here necessarily just yet. Uh, predictions, charts. Let's check out charts. This is new to me. Uh, you tricked me again. Cool. Well, uh, I know there's some cool viz coming up because I can see examples of it right down here. Uh, and it looks like it's, uh, if you see the link in the bottom left corner, it just says slash nope. Uh, so those will be coming up eventually. Uh, I think also we have individual player stats, which is interesting. So if I go up here and I type in Ovechkin, what do I get? Nothing yet. That's okay. Uh, if I go to skater stats and then I search for Ovechkin, I saw that like the name's linked and I want to see if that does anything for me. So let's do that. Ovechkin. Click on it. An error has occurred. Okay. So that guy is, uh, well, you can't see it because it popped up a new window, but apparently Manny's working on building out a player profile page. This guy does not yet do anything. That's okie dokie. We're used to the bleeding edge in hockey stats. Uh, I think it's about, you know, everything I can get to uh, in this. It seems like there's some new features that will be coming soon. Custom query looks really cool. Player profiles looks really cool. Highlights, uh, again, highlights in, in uh, War are not available yet. Uh, highlights is a really cool thing where you can go to an individual game and be like, all right, show me some goals from that game. Uh, it's super useful if you want to look back on the disaster of Caps versus the uh, – Tampa Bay Lightning in 2010, right before they started like a Mondo win streak. Uh, if you have any questions, let's let's chat about them in the comments. Uh, and uh, I'm I'm happy to to answer whatever I can. Uh, and uh, round of let's do a golf clap for Manny. Thank you for watching. See ya.